demonstrating how to set up a ventilator. So we've got Mr. John here, who's already intubated. Um, we've got the nice ventilator uh, from Wenman. And so we'll be going step by step. Um, so for those who already have the emergency care algorithms, there's a um, section seven talks about guidelines for initiation of mechanical ventilation. And that's what we'll be projecting today and showing you how it works. Um, so I'm gonna go through the um, basics uh, using the algorithm, going down the algorithm. So starting from a perspective of we've just intubated a patient and this is the first time we're handling a ventilator. What are the considerations to go through? How do we set a ventilator? But remember, ventilators are different but the principles are more or less the same. And that's why we've got Dr. Sheila here today to take us through the different aspects and help us understand the different terminologies when it comes to ventilation. All right. So, um, okay. So, of course, our patient is not connected to the ventilator. Okay. So, Dr. Sheila, um, we've just intubated this patient and we need to put them on the ventilator. Uh, what are the things we need to consider in terms of starting off our ventilation? Okay. So the first thing is, after you've intubated the patient, continue bagging the patient until you set up the ventilator. Okay, so we need to bag the, yes. So we don't just connect the patient and then start setting. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yes, okay. Bag the patient as you get ready with your ventilator. Okay. Please know your ventilator before the day of, uh, you need to use ah, it. So it can't be the first time you're seeing no, the ventilator. It shouldn't be the first time you're seeing your ventilator. Okay. You should at least know how to turn it on and how to use it. Okay. And the other thing is use modes that you're more comfortable with. Ah, don't you're try. going to go into different. Tell us what yes. modes are, because I don't know what mode is. Okay. So I saw, okay, so we have a ventilator. So I guess the first thing we need to figure out. So our patient is being bugged, okay? So we've not just left them there, not breathing. So remember, when you connect your patient, when you intubate your patient, you have to continue bugging the patient. Do not connect them directly to the ventilator until the ventilator is set. Okay. So our patient for now, uh, we will switch on the ventilator. So maybe we can start from there. Okay. So I'm gonna get the algorithm as she's switching on the ventilator. Okay. So that is the on button. We are already familiar with the ring on the machine, so okay. we know where the on button is. All right. We know where the menu buttons are, the alarms are. You check if it, the, uh, the machine is completely charged. Okay, so, so make sure it's on charge. Make sure it's on charge okay. or at least fully charged on the battery. Okay. So you don't want to start ventilating the patient and then it goes off. Ah, okay. So it has to be uh, well charged. Okay, good. Okay. So, so the next thing. So the first thing you see is this interface, which helps you decide what type, what, what patient you're going mm -hmm. to be ventilating. Okay. So it has emergency settings. So you can see it has an infant, a child, and an adult. Wait, so it has, we don't use the same settings for everyone? No, the different settings for the patient based on their height and weight. Okay. So we tend to use different mod modes of ventilation even for patients, for pediatric patients compared to adult patients. Okay, so we go through the adult one first, okay. then try to figure out what, what are the difference. differences are with the pediatrics. Okay. Okay, so go to emergency adult mode. Yes, so it's already going to emergency adult mode. So okay. we use the center button to decide. Okay. All right. So it automatically goes to the invasive okay. um, ventilator mode. So this right. one, as you can see at the top here, it says IPPV. So uh, in our setting, we have a test lamp. So we would still connect. Okay. Normally, most places we end up using um, gloves <laughs> to check. Okay. All right. So good. So we normally will use test gloves, but most ventilators sometimes will come with a test lamp. Make sure you get the test lamp because that really helps. Okay. All right. So, so we've switched it on and it's doing something. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what it's. So it seems to be doing. Maybe we can see it's ventilating. Okay. Uh, I don't know where the camera is, but maybe they can see. So it is ventilating. Okay. okay. So now the next thing is what's the next thing we are setting? So the Wayman uh, ventilator comes in with already set functions for an adult patient. So Do the most blood... ventilators have this? No, they don't. Okay, all right. Okay, so you need to set the ventilator for what you require for the patient. Okay. In terms of what you're trying to do, which is oxygenation, giving patient oxygen. Okay. And removing carbon dioxide. Okay, all right. Okay. So, it, so essentially you're pushing air in and switching. So, yeah. but just, so just so that people understand how a vent works. The vent, I can see it pushing air in. Does it suck out after that? <laughs> what happens? Okay, that's a very good 
questions. Yes. So ventilators work on positive pressure ventilation, which means it's pushing air directly into the lung in a positive direction. So it pushes air. It pushes air. Okay. Uh -huh. So usually exhalation, which is what the air coming out of, yes. is usually a passive process. Oh, so it's not sucking air from so the patient. So it's not sucking air. Okay. So the just, air will just come out of the patient so, once this. So exhalation is passive. It's passive. So all a ventilator does is push air. Yes. At a, I guess at a periodic interval. Yes. Okay, so I guess, okay. So right. the first thing you want to set then what is what? So you want to set up the oxygenation, which is the most important thing is to give your patient oxygen. So we need to be at how much oxygen? So basic, when you start a patient on ventilation, always start at 100% oxygen. Okay. And then you can lean down based on how improving your patient is, okay. what your parameters is. Okay. You, you do a blood gas and your oxygen levels are more than 100 millimeters of, uh, of oxygen over air. So you start so at 100. Start at 100. Max. Then, then you can we'll always come down. Okay. Down. All, right. All right. So for now, because we don't have an oxygen tank attached, we just leave that room there. Yeah, which is the 21%. Okay. So make sure your oxygen levels at 100% when you're starting off to make sure that. So that would be the O2. Yes. So that could be 100. Some machine, I think, would say one. Yes. Um, uh, which is your FIO2 of one. Okay. So that uh, would be important. Okay. Right. So oxygen is going in. But what? what how is the machine determining how much? What air, how much are there like? So, if I look at my algorithm, uh, where let me get my algorithm. So, you can get a casualty app, it has the algorithms, um, or you can get the copies of the website, they're free. Uh, so, feel free. So, if I go to my algorithm, it says choose familiar mode. What are the different modes? Because I'm not familiar with any. Oh, yeah, there we go. So, choose familiar mode, SIMV or PR. So, what is SIMV? What is PRVC? And what other options are there? Okay. So, when you start ventilating a patient, you will make a decision on whether this is already an intubated patient. There are other modes for non-intubated patients. But the basic premise is, is the patient breathing or not? So a patient is definitely not breathing. patient has breathing, but is not yes, breathing. Yes. So we are going to take over and give the patient full support of the machine. Okay. Full support means we're going to set how much the rate at which you want the patient to breathe. Okay. You're going to set what tidal volume that you want the patient to get, okay. meaning how much air are they taking out of the so lung? We're going to how fast? How fast? How much, how much air? Volume. Okay. Okay. How much oxygen? So oxygen really puts which there. Is the yes. Uh -huh. And there's something called a peak, which is your. I okay. I think we need to go step by step. Now. All right. So mode. What mode are we putting our patient on? So the patient who's not breathing, you set on a full vent mode where you set your rate, your tidal volume, your FI2, and your peak. Okay. And those are usually, they're usually two basic modes, which is volume or pressure. Volume, pressure, what's okay. the difference? So the difference is when you set a, when you set a mode where the tidal volume is guaranteed, meaning that you set a number and whatever the patient, uh, whenever a patient takes a breath, they'll go to a maximum of that tidal volume that you set. So if I set a volume, so we'll discuss how we set different volumes. Yes. Okay. Right. Um, we'll set how much tidal so how much volume do we normally want to give a patient? Okay, that's a very good question. So for patients, you want to decide a normal patient who has nothing else that's wrong with their lung. You Let's start with that one. Yes. Yes. That's a normal patient. Yes. So we'll set a tidal volume of between four and 10 liters per that's kilo, a mil mil per kilo. Okay. So that will be, so if uh, we're assuming the patient is about 70 kgs, yes. so you want at 280 or? So you yeah. want to set it somewhere between either between five and eight as your maximum, because then again, you don't want to set too high a tidal volume. Okay. What's the so normal, roughly like, between like we what I'm breaking now, how much is that? Right. Exactly. So about 450 to 500 of a tidal volume for an adult so 450 to 500, if you were divided by 70, what are we talking about? Six? Six to seven, six to seven mm -hmm. mLs per kg. All right. Yes. All right. Okay, so we can start off, let's say we start with six mLs. So, wait, but I'm, I'm saying, if we're looking at the modes, Okay, so there are ventilation modes, for example. Mm -hmm. What is IPPV? Okay. So, yes. So this is intermittent positive pressure ventilation. Okay. So it gives you a guaranteed either tidal volume or targeted pressure, which will not change depending on the patient. All right. Okay. So it's a guaranteed pressure mode. So mm -hmm. if I set a pressure of 30, the patient will get in a pressure of 30 into their lungs, which will then generate the tidal volume. So to determine how much air is going into the patient, I'm either setting volume yes. or I'm setting pressure. Yes. Okay. So volume I understand. So if, if you're going to say I'm gonna put six mLs per kg, 
then I'd say for my patient for 70 cases, maybe that would be 420 ml. Okay. Okay. So, um, so that's a, but for pressure, how do we set pressure? Okay. If I'm using, so what are the volume modes, by the way? What are the volume, different volume modes? Okay. Yeah. The different volume modes would be either IPPV, intermittent positive pressure, pressure ventilation. Pressure. Okay. Okay. You can have your SIMV. What is SIMV? Which is synchronized intermittent mandatory volume. Ventilation. What is that one? What is synchronized intermittent mandatory ventilation? What is that? So it basically means that you will set a certain type of volume, which will be delivered at a certain time based on whatever respiratory rate you feel in the patient. Uh -huh. However, if the patient takes a breath in between what the machine has decided is your test rate, okay, they will be supported for those breaths. Uh -huh. okay. So they synchronize. So yes. Yeah. So it's synchronizing the patient's the own patient's own breath. Okay. Right. Is that a good thing? It is. Okay. But can also be a bad thing. Okay, when is if the patient thing? is yeah. breathing fast, uh -huh. okay, uh -huh. and you have a synchronized intermittent ventilation, the machine will deliver its set breath even if they're 12. Okay. And whatever the patient does over and above the machine will also be supported. Uh -huh. so that, be, that means the patient will be hyperventilating. Yes, yeah. so you end up with hyperventilation, Ooh. which okay. is not. So, what's a good way to get spread? Okay, so what you as an experienced anesthetist and you, which better patient. What's your comfort level? So my comfort level is what was the patient doing? What was the patient's rate before you? So most of our patients, especially in the emergency department, hyperventilating and then got to a point where they could no longer support their own breath and breathing. Okay. So we probably were starting at rates of 30. All right. Yes. So 30 is, a, is not a bad number. Okay. You can start there and then lean down on the vent rate. So on the, so for more, we'll choose IPPV for yes. us. Okay, okay. all right so if i'm going to the algorithm let me just check all so right. i'll say we're gonna use so is prvc the same as ippv no it what is, is not. PV, prvc so prvc is pressure regulated volume control aha okay, okay. so it says the pressure is regulated okay and the volume is guaranteed all right okay all right, all right. so it's just about volume it's just about volume so at the end of the day we need to make sure we know how much volume is getting into the patient yes that's the most that's important the most part the most important thing is know what volume you're getting and you don't want to exceed you want to be around six ml per kg yes and so that's the main thing so volume okay, okay. so how much air is being pumped into the patient okay remember my is just pumping air so we need to make sure that the air being pumped does not exceed 6 ml per kg as a starting point. Yes. Okay, good. So if we were to go down, okay, so that's that. So in our machine here, where is the volume? So this is our volume, VT. Okay, so VT is tidal volume. Tidal volume, okay. which is in mil. Okay. Okay. okay, so that's 500 ml. So that's, if our guy is 70, so this guy is Mr. White here. So if he's 70, so he's probably yeah. getting 7 ml per kg. Yeah. Is that okay? Which is safe. That's, That's okay. okay. Okay, 7 ml per kg. Okay. All right, so children 500 because it's 7 ml per kg. If it was less, then we'd probably use less volume. Mm -hmm. All right, okay? okay? So, main thing, we have volume. So, we figured out how much air is going to go through, okay? Then the next thing is, I guess, how fast should the air be, okay? Mm -hmm. So, how much we said that? Okay, so to determine how fast you want the air to go in, you're thinking at the respiratory rate. Mm -hmm. so we are starting. We are starting. Before intubating the patient, we are starting. Okay. Yes. So think of it as each breath is delivered within a certain time. Okay. So if you're breathing at a rate of 30 breaths per minute, that means if you are, so one breath is what, two seconds? Two seconds. Okay. All right. Uh -huh. Now, you need to, for normal physiology, the inspiratory time is one one time constant, whereas the exhalation is two time constant. Uh -huh. Which pretty much means you divide <laughs> that breath into three. Oh. So you have one part and still inhalation and two parts of exhalation. Okay. So if so you have two uh, minutes. So at that, so just really simple. Uh, <laughs> so a third, a third of your time yeah. is spent breathing in, two thirds of your time is spent breathing out. Correct. Okay, so how does that fit into me what I'm saying? All right. Yes. So if the patient is breathing at 30 breaths per minute, mm -hmm. sometimes some machines will allow you to set the IE ratio, which is inspiration to exhalation. Okay, so wait, right? I saw IE ratio somewhere. Hold yes. on, let me just get my algorithm. So on the algorithm, uh, it says tidal volume, 6 to 8 ml per kg body weight, and then rate starts of the patient's pre less than 30. 
Okay, so then I don't see any AI ratio. So I so AI ratio, what ratio are you looking for? So you're trying to maintain as normal physiology as possible. Okay. So if the patient is breathing at about 30 breaths per minute. Okay. Then you take 60 divided by 30, so each breath is two, two seconds. Minutes, two seconds, yes. sorry. So of that, a third will be inhalation. So about 0 0.8 seconds will be inhalation and 1.2 ah. will be exhalation. So I need to break I need to break it down so that a third of the time is spent breathing in, and a third of time breathing out. And why is this important? Yes. Because if you don't maintain that normal physiology, patients end up stacking breaths. Ah, you're breathing. Oh, remember, oh yeah, because <laughs> the machine is pumping air. Yes. If you don't give enough time for it to allow you allow to, to come out. out, then you'll just be pretty much blowing up a balloon. Exactly. Ah, uh, exactly. yeah, and those are, in fact, that's coming up a bit later in terms of what are the complications of ventilation and how to get out. So remember, your machine is pumping air. It does not suck in air out of the patient. That's so true. for every 500 ml that goes in, we need to give it time to remove, remove the five for, for air to come out essentially. All right. Okay. okay, so that means your inspiratory time needs to always be less than your expect. You need to spend more time breathing out yes. than breathing in. Okay. All right, as a basics. Good. Right. So what rate are we on now here? So right now we are at a rate of 10. Okay. 10 breaths per, per minute. Okay. Okay. So that's a bit. So we want a 30. Yes, we want a 30. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? You use the, the dial. Okay. So. Frequency, frequency, yeah, 10. This is still 500. Okay, that's 10, but frequency, I think is... Ah, sorry. Yes, so frequency, frequency yes. So frequency is your respiratory rate. Yes. So we are going to go to 30. So we're starting where the patient Where the patient was. Okay. So as you can see, let's see how much what happens. Okay, so let's see. So what's the pressure? Okay. Okay, look at what's the difference. Look at what is happening now. Okay. If you notice the difference, I don't know how best to showcase that. Maybe that is a bit better. Yes. Okay. So note when our pressure, when our respirate, you see how fast this is, and the bag is not actually coming back down to complete. Okay. So let's go back to ten and see what happens. Okay. So it's adjusting. You see how much I'm breathing out? Okay, so it's resetting. Don't worry. You see how much time? So be wary. If you're putting your patient at an extremely high respiratory rate, that means you're not giving them time to breathe out. Okay? So you need to be cautious about that. So there are instances, I guess, where you want to start the, where the patient was. Because there's a reason why your patient was breathing at 30. Okay? So you want to start there, but do we maintain it there or you want to come down after? You want to come down after. The okay. idea is once you've had the patient on the ventilator for at least 30 minutes, okay. do a blood gas and use that to help you adjust your respiratory Come back down. Okay. All right. Come back down. So even if you're starting, because your patient, remember, your patient sometimes, I guess, is breathing too fast to compensate for acidosis and things like that. So you don't want to start off with a patient who was breathing at 30 and automatically put them on 10. Yes. Because then that should have a problem then. Because then now they're not trying to get rid of that CO2. Okay, so so let's go a normal patient. Let's say a patient, for example, uh, head injury, did not have any other issues. So we, we intubated them for air protection, meaning they have healthy lungs. So that one would put them at what rate? What's that normal rate? Normal rate would be between 12 and 18. Okay. So we tend to do about 14. So, so we put 14. So Mr. White here is got head banged up. So we put it at 18, at 14. 14. Okay, so you can see let's say at 14. Okay, enough time to breathe out as you can see. Oh, awesome. Okay, so it's not too fast. Remember, so you don't want to be pumping air into the patient's chest and not letting it out because in that case, then you end up uh, with breath stacking, as you say. Okay, so we figured the volume. So we are pushing air 500 ml, which is 7 ml per kg for my patient. We set the ventilator at uh, 40 breaths per minute because he didn't have any other issues before intubation. Uh, but if he had, so I guess it's, that was his normal, I, to be honest. So you are starting off always at your patient's normal rate before intubation, or where they were before intubation. All right, so let's see. So we've got the rate. Then I see on my PIP. What is PIP? Okay, so PIP is your peak inspiratory pressure. Okay, 
positive, no, the P E P. I think positive P-E-P. and expression. Oh, P. Yes. Sorry. Okay. So yes. P positive and expression. Yes. Which is that setting right there. Yes. Okay. So you say in normal physiology, mm-hmm. because you have your vocal cords. They close and open at a certain rate. Okay. You tend to hold in air in your lungs. For when the breath, when breath of all the air that you you come out. It doesn't all come out. There's oh, air okay. in the airways, uh, the the airways, uh, and all that helps maintain your alveoli. Okay. okay. So even when you're breathing out, they're still oxygenating your tissues, right? Okay. When you intubate a patient, you go through the vocal cords and you lose that feeling. Okay. okay. So now when you put the patient on the ventilator, the risk is that the alveoli will collapse. So they all the air cells, the small air cells, sucks in, air the sucks in the lungs. Okay. So you want to maintain those open because that's why the gas exchange occurs. Okay. All right. So, so that air in comes in your peep, your okay. positive end expiratory pressure. All right. You try to maintain it at between three and five centimeters of water, okay. which is the peak that you physiologically have. Okay. To keep your alveoli open. Okay. So we want to set it at what five? So this because one? he is a normal patient, yes. we set it at five. Okay, let's see what happens. Aha. No, it's, I don't know. It's not, it's not collapsing like it was. Hey, I think that's a cool, okay. So let's go back to people zero. Let's, let's, let's show this. Okay. So as you can see, it collapses. I don't know, it's very, the lights, there we go. As you can see, it's collapsing. Not okay, so it's collapsing as you can see, it's more or less going back in. Okay, I'll do a bit of a show there. You see how it's collapsing. All right, so let's put a people five. Okay, so without a people, okay. every time the patient exhales, mm-hmm. the alveoli will collapse. Ah, look, it's not going back in, it's refused to go back in. So this is what we want. That is what you want. You want the alveoli to remain a bit open? You want them to remain open because once you co- they collapse completely during exhalation, yes. and then you inflict them again, yes. that in and out causes shearing of the alveoli. Okay, then, all right. Which lung damage. Okay, okay. all right. So what's that? Okay, okay, good. So can we connect our patient? We've been bugging for too long. Are we good okay. now? Yes. Okay. Are for the FIO2? Yes. 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 Now we can. Okay, so I'm going to connect the patient. Then we can look at different other modes on the ventilator. So I'm gonna put the patient on that. So remember, you can use a glove, okay? You can see our lungs are expanding. And the machine is a bit happier, so it's less more noisy now. Okay. So you can see it's not, the lungs are not collapsing, there's some air left in, okay? So frequency, this frequency is too high. Okay. At 14. So maybe do the balance of it? Yes. Okay. Always remember to listen to your alarm. Yes. Not back do not. Them. Okay. So you set the alarm. All right. Let's so let's recap this a bit. Okay. So we started off, you said an FIO2 of 100. Okay. So we had an FIO2 of 100, but because we're not on oxygen at this point, we're using a 21. Our Tidal volume we set here, which is the range ventilation, your tidal volume, sorry, which is 500, okay? And that was because we said we want to give the patient 7 ml per kg. Correct. Okay? Our patient was a normal patient, we were breathing normally, so we put the rate at 12, okay? So we put the rate at 12, that's normal for the patient, okay? But now, I see a lot of other numbers on this screen. So let's see if we can demystify some. So we figured out O2, O2 means how much oxygen you're giving the patient. So O2, at the end of your 21%, but we won't start at 100%. Yes. And then, let's say our patient was normal lungs mm-hmm. and doesn't need all that oxygen. How low should we go? Okay, so a patient with normal lungs will ideally do 21% of Room air, yes. However, on the ventilator, it's not recommended to go below 35. Okay. And if I took that fact. So okay. you do between 35 and 40. 40, yeah. But really, it's based on your partial pressure of oxygen on your blood gas. All right? Your okay. PaO2. But I know what patients. I'm just talking. It's 60 to 80 millimeters of mercury, so about an FIO2. Sure. Many places have no blood gas. That's why okay. I'm like. So yeah. do 35 to 40. 35 to 40. And at least have a pulse oximeter. Have a pulse oximeter yes. that is at least showing you saturations above 94%. Alright, so your size above 94%. Oh, just drop your O2 until the point where your size are just above 94. I think mean, that's a good guideline. Yeah. I see this MV, MVI. 
Okay. Liters per minute. What is that? So that is a minute ventilation. What is minute ventilation? So minute ventilation is what sort of governs how much carbon dioxide you're taking out. Mm -hmm. And it's a function of your respiratory rate mm -hmm. and your tidal volume. Ah, so minute ventilation is... So we're doing 500 ml yes. per breath. Per breath, which is the 500, 500 And then you're doing 12 breaths a minute. Yes. So minute ventilation is 500 times 12, which is 6,000, I guess. Yes. Okay, no, get, that's in ml. So, oh yeah, so good. So it's automatically calculated. Yes. Our minute ventilation to be? It's six. Six liters per minute. So six liters per minute. So you can even, I mean, because I know some machines will be sold to set the minute ventilation. Yes. So you just need to understand that minute ventilation is the rate times the tidal volume. Yes. So let's do a bit of mental math here. So let's say, so what's ideal minute ventilation? I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. So ideal minute ventilation should be between five and ten liters. 5 and 10 liters. Yes, anything between that will give you what you're targeting is a PaCO2, partial pressure of carbon dioxide, but it's in yeah. your yeah. blood gas. Yeah. So that was roughly. Yeah, it's not a blood gas, it's by the way. Yes, those two are. Roughly put it between 35 and 45, which That's, is more. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, so that's very good. So, if we wanted a minute ventilation, so let's assume I have a blood gas and I have a lot of CO2. Mm -hmm. Would increasing my minute ventilation reduce the CO2 or increase it? I don't know what would happen. Yes, they work in the uh, opposite direction. Okay. The higher your minute ventilation, okay. the lower your carbon dioxide. And don't want to go too low, right? Yes, you don't want to go too low. Okay. So assume you were doing a tidal volume of 500 and a rate of 12 and your CO2 is 50. Which is high. Which is high. Yes. Okay. So now you're going to increase your respiratory rate okay. or your tidal volume so that now your minute ventilation, which was at 6, will go to 7. Okay. So 15, assume you were 12. Yes. So now you've gone up to the rate of 15. So 15 okay. times 50. Times 500. Times 500. Yes. Times 500. That's 7.5. So we'll go to 7.5. 7.5 minutes. Okay. Which is definitely higher than 6. All right. Let's, let's see what we have. So you're saying, so we, our patient, we want to... Push uh, out the carbon dioxide. We want to push out. So the patient has a lot of carbon dioxide. Okay. And so we are like, we want to increase the minute ventilation. So that we can lower the carbon dioxide. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna increase what do we do? Do we increase the volume or increase the rate? So because we have seven liters per seven mils per kilo, yes. which is right about where it's safe. Yes. I think we'd better go up on the rate. Okay. Because we're still within the physiological. Alright, so we said we go to fifteen, right? right? So I'm gonna go to fifteen on this. Let's see how that goes. Alright, so I'm at fifteen, so my rate should be going, my pressure should be breaking a bit faster. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, good. Oh wait, our minute ventilation is changing. We are at six point seven, so it's going up. Okay, the machine is complaining that that's too fast. That's too fast for patients. Okay, but again, it depends. You can adjust your alarms because maybe sometimes it's actually what you require. And note, actually, yeah, we've gotten to so fifteen times five hundred is seven point five, and the machine is almost there. All right. Okay, good. So that's. That's nice. So we have 7.5 liters per minute. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. So now you know your new CO2 will be much lower. Lower after it, this. You're emptying more of the lung. Instead of emptying 6 liters, you're emptying 7 liters. You have washed out more. Okay. How long after setting the bench should you be testing your... Uh, how much? Yeah, okay. So voice is there, but no clear request. It's possible to speak facing the screen. We are okay. doing our best. <laughs> yeah, we need to shout. All right. Okay. So, um... How much, how soon after setting the ventilator should you do a blood gas? Okay, so ideally we think 30 minutes to an hour, depending okay. on how time you have. Okay. And you're also looking at the patient minute by minute. Say you okay. put the patient on the ventilator, they are sweating, they are not synchronizing, you adjust the ventilator to the patient. Okay. But at least 30 minutes, everything holding, if your saturations are holding, the patient is not sweating, not everything. Wait 30 minutes, do your gas, so you know where to adjust your ventilator. All right. So in terms of focus, I just need to understand where should we be focusing on? When I've put the patient on the ventilator, should I be focusing on what's happening here or what's happening here? I think it's a little bit of both, but okay. patient, we manage patients, not ventilators. Okay, right? yes. <laughs> okay. yes. So if the patient, you put the patient on the ventilator, they're not synchronizing, when they're breathing in, there's a lot of alarms yes. going on, patient is sweating, they're tachycardic, you need to adjust something. So your patient is not comfortable. comfortable. That is not the right mood for the patient. Okay. You need to do something. 
All right. So yeah. focus on this. Make sure your patient is comfortable. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me see which other buttons we can press here. Okay. So I'm gonna go down on the rate, I guess. Um, so that we stop having all that noise. Okay. Okay. So um, let's see. There are different modes. Uh, let's see. Ventilation mode. What is CPAP plus PS? Okay, that's CPAP plus Can we, can we go into CPAP? Is, is that a mode that can put on a patient who is not breathing? No. Okay. The CPAP is a continuous positive airway pressure. Okay. PS is pressure support. Okay. And this is supporting a patient who is continuously breathing. So the patient has to be breathing. The patient has to be breathing. The patient okay. is not breathing, that's the wrong for the patient. Okay, so this right. is... All right, so I guess we'll have to have another whole session on non-invasive ventilation, yes, right? Yes. So that's a patient who is not intubated. Not intubated. Okay, so that's okay. mode is for patients not intubated. Let me switch other modes that there. Also a weaning mode. Okay. You put the patient on the ventilator. The patient had pneumonia. They're much better three, four days later. You're trying to wake up the patient and liberate them from the ventilator. Then you're going to modes where the patient is breathing. Okay. You're reducing the support. That's why now you go from your IPPD, which is your... Full mode yes. pressure support, then you go to your CPAP, you go your pressure support ventilation, PSV, yeah. where the patient is being supported when they breathe, plus the machine has set Okay, let's, let's think of this, okay. So, PSV is pressure support ventilation. Yes. That means your patient is breathing spontaneously, yes. and the machine is just helping them breathe. Yes. So, if your patient is breathing spontaneously, it's not breathing spontaneously, then you can't put them on pressure support. You can't support. put them on a pressure support. <laughs> okay, because there's nothing to support. Aha, uh -huh. okay. <laughs> so PSV, pressure support ventilation. Yes. CPAP is continuous positive airway yes. pressure. Yes. Do yes. I need to be breathing for that one also? Yes. Okay. In a CPAP mode, there is no setting for a respiratory rate. Aha. Uh -huh. The rate is what the patient does. Generate. Generate. Okay. And you're using the machine to support that breathing. Okay. So it will sense when the patient takes a breath okay. and deliver whatever pressure support you given. Okay. Either it's centimeters of water okay. or. Yes. I'll check my algorithm whether we have. Do we have any NIV? Okay. Whether we have NAV? It just says at the top that you should consider NIV. Consider NIV, yes. yes. So I think we need to look at that. All right. Okay. So let's see what else is there. Uh, we look at ventilation mode. So it's full support. What is PRVC plus PS? Regulated. So for these two modes, yes. CPAP plus pressure support, okay. uh -huh. for the spontaneously breathing patient, okay. we are now trying to win off This one is for spontaneously breathing. Yes. Okay. The pressure regulated volume control is a special mode because what it does is it limits the pressure going into the lung. Okay. So, well, can you set? Wait, is that one? Do we have a pressure mode on this one? This is SIMV. So I think that's, yeah. Let's see, let's see, SIMV, let's start. I don't know. So you're now changing the effect, so it's changing to synchronize. Synchronous uh -huh. intermittent mandatory ventilation. Okay. So when you say mandatory ventilation, meaning there's a rate and okay. a tidal volume which is mandatory given okay. to the patient. Okay. And in between, the patient will breathe and there will be a pressure. I said there's P max. What is P max? Okay. So there's a minimum, there's a, even as you're ventilating the patient, assume of the lung is a balloon. Mm -hmm. So when you're pushing in a volume, it's generating a pressure of some yes. sort. Yes. Yes. All right. And that, in some of the modes, when you say pressure control ventilation, you're giving a certain pressure to generate a tidal volume. Yes. So with volume and pressure, it's just an interplay of the two. Okay, so we uh, pause, right. pause, pause. So Let's wait. Too fast. Ah, yeah. Okay. So in volume, yes. we are pushing a, air. A, a, air. A certain set of so we, volume. So we'll set 500, it will go 500. Yes. Now, okay. depending on the patient's lung compliance or the patient's uh, body habitat, they will then generate a certain pressure. All right. Okay, yeah. So, but that should change. Yes. Rest of rest. That's right. But in a pressure control mode, in yes. a pressure mode, mode. we are pushing air until a certain pressure. pressure. Yes. So and we again, need to air. Depending on the patient's uh, lung yeah. mechanics, yeah. it will generate a, a tidal volume that will change breath to breath. Okay. So we essentially, then in that case, we need to make sure we give we set enough pressure to achieve a certain tidal Which volume. Which was still the four to six liters. Okay. okay. All right. So it's always about volume. So it's about volume, it's about rate, PIP, and oxygen. Four things, okay? So volume, rate, PIP, oxygen. Uh, all right, let's, let's zoom into the um, ventilator. Okay, let's zoom into the ventilator. Uh, there we go. Good. And see what else is there. Uh, so we have ventilation mode. 
Okay, what is SIPPV? So that's synchronized intermittent positive pressure ventilation. Uh -huh. Let's so try that one. Right. Ventilation mode. So remember, you just need to know what mode. Oh, sorry. Uh, start, I think. Yes. Aha. Okay. Anything change? Um, it looks the same Okay. So in this one you have the FIO2. Yes. You have your minute ventilation. Okay. You have your rate, rate, okay. and your tidal volume. All right. And you have Good. your peak. Okay. These are the basics. Yes. So these are the basics, and the same things we've actually put on the al uh, on the algorithm is set your tidal volume, set your no, set your FIO2. Then we went to set tidal volume. We set the rate. Okay. And then we put the peak. All right. Let's talk about. I say we have baby tennis. All right, so my machine is just making noise. Okay, it's alarming. As you say, the patient is sweating. Things are happening. What are the things I need to think about? Okay, because let me see. We've got uh, on the algorithm. All right. Uh, dopes. Dopes is my alarm. Okay, so at the bottom there of the algorithm. So what is what I, what I need to do? So whenever you have what we call ventilator dyssynchrony, something is going wrong and you're so not the sure. The alarms are making noise, are making. my vital signs are getting off, what do I need to do? So you need to reassess. Starting okay. with the patient. Okay. So the first thing is you need to check your tube because it could okay. be sick. Do I need, locked. do I disconnect the patient or just leave them in the vent for now? So the ideal thing is you disconnect the patient from the vent okay. and you reassess. Okay, so we can okay. bug the patient. You can bug the patient. So it's you can disconnect okay. and bug the patient. Okay. So one thing, when you disconnect, yes. assume the patient was sucking their breath. Yes. You remove that. You've taken okay. care of one. So dopes means. Let me just check. So dopes means D is Dis displaced. Displaced. So I need to check if the tube is in the right place. Yes. Okay. So, so you check the point at the level okay. at which you. So put we are put it at twenty. So that's fine. So okay, we're still there. Yeah, you're still where you okay. said that. Okay. All right. Okay. You check to see if the. Okay. Uh, uh, let me put this on the test now so it's not making too much noise. Okay, uh -huh. okay. So, what's the next thing? So, I'm bugging the patient, okay? So, your feeling oh, obstructed. Yes, the tube could be blocked. Uh -huh. So, maybe I need to suction the tube, yes. okay? Uh, maybe I need to suction the tube, uh, the tech guys. Yes. Okay. Okay, so maybe I need to suction the tube, so obstruction. Okay, what else? Could have a mucus plug, you okay. remove that, and you All right. to think of. The other okay. thing, when you bath the patients, you're able to feel the resistance on the bath. Aha. Okay. Yes. Okay. Then, so we need to make sure that if there's good yes, flow of air. Once you bath, okay. the difficulty is okay. too easy. Okay. Because if it's too easy, the tube is probably not in the right place. <laughs> okay. It's so. probably come out. All right. Okay. Now, uh, aha. Uh -huh. So actually, the interesting part is this ventilator has a bagging mode. Actually, ah. any other Yes. <laughs> Hold on. So we could actually go to uh, I think we oh, may yeah. ventilation manual. Yes. Okay, so good. So we have a fancy ventilator. Okay, so I'm gonna find the patient. Okay. So I've so I'm bagging the patient now. Okay, so there's a button you have to press. Yes. Okay. Good. So I'm checking if there is good air entry. entry. Okay. Is the chest expanding? Okay. okay. So I'll bug the patient. Okay. They're missing on the tube. How, how, how fast would they be bugging at this point? Okay. <laughs> so we say after intubation, six to eight um, breaths per minute. Okay. Right. So I guess one breath every six seconds or so. Yes, okay. Yeah, so there we go. So we're getting good chest rise. Okay. Yeah, you're checking for misting on the tube. Okay. So chest I can is check. Amazing. Yes. My tube is okay. misting. The tube chest. is at the right okay. position that you so, set it at. So I've checked for displacement. Okay. I've checked for suction. So I suctioned. Uh, suction. Okay. And when the bag seems to be air is entering. Okay. The other okay. thing is to check your cuff. Ah, so this could have blown. Yes. Yeah, okay. The cuff could have blown. It could have come out and the cuff is above the cords. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So all of that you'll be able to tell when you're bagging the patient. Okay. All right. All right. But check your cuff. Okay. Make sure that it's nicely. Inflated. All right. All right. So that seems to be working. Or okay. I have to remember to bag for the patient. Okay. Right. Pneumothorax. We've checked. So yes. there's good air entry in the yes. lungs. Okay. All right. And then next thing I want to check is equipment check. 
So are we connected to the patient? Mm -hmm. You check all the way from the patient. Okay. You check your tubings all the way to the machine. Okay. Sometimes they're kinked. You're not okay. seeing. It's probably obstructed. Okay. You can see that the pressure will be higher on the machine. Okay. So you troubleshoot your system. All right. All right. Okay. That's okay. Good. All right. Then the next thing is uh, start breath. Auto breath. What is that? Okay. So when you don't give the patient enough time to breathe out. Okay. When, when the machine is delivering another breath and the patient is exhaling, okay. what hands up is you, there will still be some air in the lung, then okay. you're adding on air. Yeah. Adding on, adding on. So what okay. that does is it hyperinflates the lung. Ah. So it's something called dynamic hyperinflation. So it's pretty much... So like how do we treat that? We just disconnect the so patient? So you just disconnect the patient and the lung will... Remember the exhalation is passing. Ah. So the lung will empty itself. Okay. And then you sort of... Alright, but then like, this needs to fix the ventilator. Yes, so now... So, okay. so let's, we need to go back to where we were. So I think we can go... Start. Okay, so we need to reduce our rate. Yes. And then you just connect the patient now. So now you reduce your rate. Okay, we can go to a rate of 10 maybe. Okay, all right. So okay. good. Yes. Uh, ventilation. All right. So done, dopes. If I look at my algorithm, and then there is fixing the problem, is, which is what we're going to disconnect from the patient, put the patient on 100% bagging, check your tube position, trick the vent, which we did, and then uh, ultrasound, I guess. That's a new one where you're checking the lung. PIP, okay, so yes. what is, can you explain PIP? Okay, so PIP stands for peak inspiratory pressure, mm -hmm. which is the maximum pressure that will be generated during each breath. So as you can see okay. here, there seems to be a pressure that's coming yes. from minimum to maximum. See? Yes. Okay? So for this specific mode setting that we have for the PIP, for this mode, yeah. the maximum pressure we're getting is 23. And that's what's giving us a total volume of 900. So the tidal volume of 500, remember now we are doing volume gravity, oh, this is volume. pressure ah, variable. Okay. Okay? Yes. So you can see this pressure is changing breath to breath. It's not all 23. Okay. Sometimes you're having a 24, sometimes it's 23. Because this is the mandatory, this is what you said. This is what is being generated by the patient's lung. Okay. Compliant. So, so you don't want it going above 30. Oh, so the pressure should never exceed 30? Yes. Why? Because then above 30, you're causing trauma to the lung because they can only stand so much pressure. Okay. Remember, the lung is like a sponge. Okay, okay. Uh, have we lost video or? Have we lost video off? Okay. Uh, or maybe. <laughs> All right. Okay. 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 So, maximum pressure is. So, it's, it's peak pressure and. PIP the same thing. So the peak pressure is the maximum pressure you're going to get to okay. generate. Okay. Right? So it is synonymous with your PIP okay. on the volume mode. Okay. Because you're not setting a pressure. But when you go to your pressure mode, your PIP, your peak inspiratory pressure, will be the pressure that you crank up plus the peak. Oh, let's hey, forget slow down. I'm even lost. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Uh -huh. So for the volume, you mm -hmm. set a certain volume. Volume. volume mode. You set a volume, it generates a pressure. Uh, okay. It's a maximum. Okay. So the volume, as the volume goes into the lungs, it gets to a certain pressure. Yes. And so you need to make sure, even if you're giving volume, you should not exceed a pressure of 30. Correct. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Now, if I'm setting, so if I'm using a pressure mode, and uh, is there any better, is there like, does it matter volume or pressure, or is what you're comfortable with? I think it's essentially what you're comfortable with. Okay. Knowing that you mustn't let your alarm, your pressure limit go above 30. Okay. Yes. All right. So if I'm setting pressure, what am I setting? Am I setting PIP? Am I setting big pressure? What am I setting? So when you set a pressure, you're setting your PI, which is your uh, minimum airway pressure, the PI. Okay. 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 And then from your PI, which is the pressure move, the pressure that you set, it will add your PIP. And now the number that will be generated here. Ah, because be PIP is the lowest, it doesn't go to zero. Yes. When you give pressure, it doesn't go to zero. No, it doesn't go to zero. So it goes to, in our setting, the pressure, even here you can see it goes yes. to five. five. Yes. Okay? Yes. It goes to five. It's your minimum pressure. Yes, it doesn't it go to zero. Minimum. Yes. I don't know that you can see that on the screen. Uh, so it doesn't go to zero. If I take yes. the PIP to zero. Check the PIP to zero. Ah, uh -huh. it's going to zero. Ah, okay. what if we put a people of 10? Okay. Maybe just let's go to people of 10. Okay. Aha, so you see it goes to 10. That's the lowest. So the lung doesn't empty. Yes. What is, 
what is okay so i think we go to five efficiencies what's the benefit of pain okay so PIP helps to maintain your alveoli open, yes. as you say, and it maintains your FRC. Remember, in your functional residual, residual capacity, capacity. I'm not aware left in the lungs after I breathe out. Okay. Yes. yes. So that is okay. what maintains oxygenation even when you're breathing out. Okay. All, All right. Keeps your alveoli. All right. So I need to set up pressure, but I also need to make if I set up PIP, I need or a PIP positive. It's positive in pressure. pressure. It will be above PIP. Yes. It will be so. If I set, if I have a PIP of 5, I cannot put a positive pressure, of the maximum I can go is 25. Correct. So that 25 plus 5 is 30. So if I go high on PIP, if I say I go to 10, the maximum I can set is 20. Alright, good. Yes. Okay, hope that makes sense. Uh, in which patients do I increase the minute ventilation? I think we discussed that. So in patients who have a lot of CO2 remaining inside, yes. then you want to increase your minute mm -hmm. ventilation. You want them to breathe a bit faster to get the CO2 out. Ah, but then what you said is, if I want to get more oxygen in, then I increase the P, positive and expiratory pressure. That's, so if I want to, oxygen to go up, I can increase the FiO2, but okay. I can also increase the P. But if I want to get rid of a lot of CO2, then I need to increase the minute ventilation. Minute ventilation which is the All right, yeah. first, basic. basic yeah. How do I put this patient on the ventilator, okay? And how do I set the ventilator? And make sure I'm getting oxygen in. So there are two things we need to make sure. We're getting oxygen in and, and we're getting carbon out. dioxide out, yes, okay? So remember that. You want to make sure oxygen is going to the patient and CO2 is coming out, okay? So um, I think as a kind of recap, because I see also time is ending, I, I'm seeing winning modes. I will not discuss winning protocols because us, we do not win patients. So once you put the patient on the vent, Aye, someone else's problem. That's her problem in ICU. So we're not gonna really go into winning, winning mode. The objective of this whole session was to get you comfortable in understanding how to set up a ventilator for a patient. And I think the key things we've discussed today is number one, start off with a no wait, know your ventilator. Know your ventilator, know your ventilator before, before you connect anyone, okay? And so practice. Uh, get a test lung or get a gloves or something that you can practice with. Number two. Set your ventilator, okay, that question, we'll answer that one, uh, Nelson. Set your ventilator before connecting it to the patient, okay? So you don't want to be experimenting on your patient's lungs. Number three, it's about, I want to push volume into the patient at a certain rate, okay? And giving enough oxygen. Yeah. So oxygen will start at 100%, then come down to what's comfortable for the patient, okay? Then, Tidal volume, 7 ml, 6, 7 ml per kg, okay? Our rate will be with what the patient started, okay? Then calm down based on the CO2 and the comfort level of the patient. You don't want to breathe too fast because then that does not allow enough time for exhalation, okay? Uh, Pmax is the maximum pressure, you don't want to go below, above 30, okay? So whatever you do, your pressure should not exceed 30. And remember, 30 includes PIP. So PIP is the air that remains in your lung to keep your alveoli open, and ideally it won't be around 5. Okay, if a patient is complaining, then we need to go, go through dopes. Is it displaced? So first you disconnect and bag your patient. Do not troubleshoot when your patient is still connected, connected to the ventilator. So bag your patient. I think I'm a very good student. So bag your patient. <laughs> Uh, so check if it's placed, if it's obstructed, if there's a new motor act, so listen to the chest, okay? The calf is not blown, mm -hmm. and then we'll check our equipment, if it's not connected or kinked, and then uh, S is, what? Saturation? Sonography. Sonography. Okay. okay? So dopes, let me just counter check. So that's why you have algorithms for this, because uh, even I don't remember some. Stacked breaths, no, S is stacked breaths. Yeah, so by disconnecting the ventilator, sometimes your rate is too fast, then that allows, that causes start to break. So if you disconnect it, you break out. Ah, yeah. There's a question. SCVC, what is that? Okay, so that's a volume mode. So it's volume. It's a volume mode. Okay. It stands for assist control. Assist control volume control. Okay. So basically, it's an assisted mode for a patient who you're setting at definite tidal volume and a definite rate. Okay. Which means, over and above what you set, which is your, for example, 10 
and your 500, that is your VC, volume control. Mm -hmm. If you have an assist control mode on that machine, when the patient initiates or triggers a breath, which is a spontaneous breath from the patient, okay. the machine will still deliver the mandatory tidal volume ah. which is set. So it's a breath with you? Yes. Okay. So it's an assisting mode where it's con assist ah. control. It's assisting you, but to a controlled volume. Oh, so you have time to breathe and sleep? Yes. So should we... Okay, maybe that's a question also we want. Do we want our patients to be a hundred percent paralyzed and the machine does all the work? Or do we want our patient to be sedated where then they are breathing with the machine? What's comfortable? What's, what's ideal? Because for us, we only just tube and send them forward. Okay. So which patients do better forward? Okay. So depending on the reason for the intubation, remember sometimes it could be type 1 respiratory failure, which you've discussed on the algorithms, yes. okay. and type 2, which is either, is it low oxygen or is it too much carbon dioxide? Ah, so, okay, right. yes, okay. Uh -huh. Yes. So if the reason that your patient is intubated is because of something other than those, mm -hmm. you know those are normal lungs. Okay. okay, all right. The idea for ventilation is it's a temporary thing. Correct the reason you put the patient on the tube okay. and disconnect them. Wing them. So do we? So if, if the they're breathing spontaneously, if they're breathing spontaneously and it's okay, yes. say a head injury patient. Yes. The reason you put them on the ventilator, airway protection, airway protection, yes. has nothing to do with the lung. Yes. So with time, that's sufficient. You will lead to whatever they are. Ah, right? okay. Yes. If the patient came in with asthma, for example, Ooh, which is another. That's issue. ventilation is a yes. new chapter. So that's a one. different yes. patient from yes. the one who is a normal lung with a head injury. Okay. Okay. All right. If the patient is being intubated because they retain CO2. Mm -hmm. And you put them on the ventilator, three, four hours later, the CO2 has down. come down. Yes. You, the reason that the patient was put on the vent is corrected. We wake up the patient and liberate them from the ventilator. Okay, as we never wake up anyone. Yes. So <laughs> it, 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 it's not, but the, the idea is that once you've corrected the reason you're yes. ventilating the patient, you bring them from the vent as soon as possible. Okay. I think that's the main thing. I really want to appreciate Dr. Sheila for really taking us through this. And the main thing, I think, as she mentioned, is Focus on what's happening on the patient. And remember, it's all about, yes, it's a machine, okay? But the machine is going into a patient. So if your patient is fighting your ventilator, if your machine is making so much noise and your patient is uncomfortable, then you're doing it wrong, okay? But just uh, disconnect, back the patient, start from the basics, yes. okay? Start from the basics and then work with your basics to either improve oxygenation or improve ventilation. So oxygenation is giving oxygen, ventilation is pushing out CO2. All right, uh, how do we get CPD points for nurses? That's through Dr. online, okay? They'll be able to give you more details on that. But I think, uh, let me see if there's any more questions. I think we've discussed how to, which mode should we be using? And then just, all right. Could you kind of ventilation using ideal body R? Ah, what is ideal? Oh wait, actually, that's, that's a very good, we missed that one. Because we were saying you're giving volume at seven levels per kg. Now, what if your patient is like 200 kgs? So should we, 200 kgs and you do times seven, that's, that's a lot of volume. <laughs> yes. So what is, yeah, what is ideal body weight and actual body weight and which one should we use? Okay, so you want to use the ideal body weight because the lung volume doesn't change whether you're 50 kilos or whether you're 200 kilos. And so your lungs don't get fat? The lungs, <laughs> the lungs really don't get fat. <laughs> uh -huh. yes? So what we try to use is use the patient's height okay. to determine what type of volume, what the ideal body weight should be. Okay, and they're calculated. Yeah, so as a rough guide, for, for, for male patients, you use 100 uh, centimeter, 100, and for female patients is 105. So 100 so, centimeters, eh? So I think my height, um, 187. So 187 centimeters? Yes. So 187 centimeters, Take uh -huh. out 105. So 187 centimeters, then, uh, well, uh, okay. it, so I'll be left with 82, 82. 82. 82 yes. So that's my ideal body weight. Oh, wait, that's easy. Yes. So patient's height in centimeters. Yes, so you measure your patient. Yes, so get a tape measure. Yes. Measure. yes. yes. So your good. patient's height in centimeters. So if it's a man, remove 100. Yes. If it's a female, remove 105. And that gives you the weight, yes. So it doesn't matter if your patient is 200 kgs. It's how long. 
slash tall they are, I guess is how long they are. Or, so so really yeah, on the line on the how long they are. So and then remove five uh, one five for females, hundred for males. That's easy to remember. So thank you very much, Mr. Shila. Uh, really, yes, even Mr. White is quite happy about this whole process. Mm -hmm.